January 31st, 2022. During a storm with force nine winds, the bulk carrier Julieta D breaks anchor and runs adrift in the North Sea. She collides with a petrol tanker, hits the transformer platform and wind turbine foundation of a wind farm under construction, and narrowly misses a gas production platform. A complex rescue operation is launched under the direction of the Dutch Coast Guard with helicopters, salvage boats, and tugboats. The crew is airlifted to safety from the damaged ship and tugs manage to tow the ship away just before it runs ashore. But it could have ended much worse for the crew, the ship, the wind turbines, and the North Sea. What can we learn from this event? And how can we prevent these kinds of accidents from happening in the future, when many more wind turbines will be built in the North Sea? To answer these questions, Marin is building the SOSC, the Seven Oceans Simulator Center a research facility focused on people with unique opportunities for simulating real-life situations at sea as authentically as possible, all with the goal of learning from accidents to make the sea safer in the future. So in the SOSC, we return to January 31st, 2022. In the large motion simulator, we find ourselves on the swaying bridge of the Julieta D. The large motion platform accurately simulates the effect of force nine winds and six meter high waves. In the spherical bridge simulator, the crew experiences the reality of that day 360 degrees around them. When the anchor starts to drag, the petrol tanker Petrora Star, anchored nearby, looms up in front of them. Crew members feel the shock when the ships collide and experience losing control of their ship when the engine room takes on water and the engines stop. Meanwhile, specialists use cameras and eye tracking software to analyze the crew's reaction as sensors record how much stress they experience with each decision they have to make. After all, the human factor is often decisive in high-risk situations and is therefore an important research area for the SOSC. The crews on the simulators also receive feedback from instructors who are following the entire operation and everything that is happening on the bridge from special observation rooms. Occasionally, the simulation is stopped or even reversed to explore alternative crew responses to the emergency. At the simulated coordination center, the captain calls the Coast Guard in real time and asks them to evacuate the ship's crew. The traffic controllers there use maps, information, and communication systems comparable to the ones they work with every day. They send search and rescue helicopters to the Julieta D, who will have to airlift the crew from the ship. This is a risky operation during a storm. In the Maritime Experience Lab, a crew member experiences what it's like to have to grab hold of a helicopter lifeline from a violently swaying ship. Standing on a moving hexapod and equipped with VR glasses, he imagines himself on the Julieta D. He sees the swaying lifeline and must try to grab the cable moving realistically above him, connected to a robot. In the meantime, the Coast Guard has also notified the Royal Netherlands Sea Rescue Institution. They are the Coast Guard's eyes and ears on sight. In the SOSC, salvers take the same journey on the fast small ship simulator. This moving simulator can recreate the strong impact on the crew as they bounce over the waves in the storm. The projection on the 360 degree screen around them matches the screens on the other simulators in every detail. This means the salvers see the Julieta D from their own perspective and react to the same waves and conditions. Conversely, the crew of the Julieta D on the LMS sees the salvers from their perspective. The emergency tug Sovereign is also on its way to the Julieta D. In our simulation, the 16-meter wide full mission bridge provides plenty of room for this. What makes this bridge unique are the physical bridge wings with their own projectors and spherical screens that present a realistic image along both sides of the ship. The crew sees the Julieta D, the salvage boats, the rescue helicopter, and all the wind turbines in the area. The crew members on the bridge are in contact with colleagues who have been dropped on board the Julieta D from helicopters in order to make a towing connection. 
This maneuver is closely coordinated with other crew members on the Sovereign's aft deck. Finally, the Julieta D is towed safely into the port of Rotterdam, accompanied by tugs on the multi-purpose simulators of the SOSC. In the SOSC, we learn how to make the sea safer, not only by looking back, but also by exploring new solutions. Could you, for example, use a drone to make a towing connection between two ships? Or can we provide the Coast Guard Center better information based on artificial intelligence, so that they can spot ships in trouble earlier and warn the strategically positioned emergency tugs? Think of vessel traffic management, where the Coast Guard actively provides shipping traffic with information and advises them based on traffic images or weather forecasts but also consider smart barriers between the navigation channel and wind turbine parks that prevent drifting ships from colliding with the turbines. A guardrail at sea like this would give the emergency tugs more time to tow the ship to safety. All this requires close cooperation between people at sea and people on shore. Cooperation that must be considered thoroughly and practiced so that we are prepared for the future. That's the purpose of the SOSC. The SOSC makes maritime operations safer and more efficient, with the most realistic simulation conceivable of how people, ships, structures, and the environment react to one another. The Seven Oceans Simulator Center is under construction and will be fully operational in 2024.